I know all about it. I know all about Huawei. I know all about uh, 5G, and uh, we're working on it. And we have companies that are now getting very, very strong in that department. And we're going to have 5G. We're going to have the best 5G in the world, just like we have everything else. Our silicon, Silicon Valley cannot be competed with. Uh, there's nobody that can compete with Silicon Valley for the brain power or for what we do. And nobody was focused on 5G, but now they are. And we have great companies going into 5G, even if they don't want it to. A lot of them were very happy doing what they were doing. But now they're going, at my request, they're going into 5G. So we don't need, we don't need anything from anybody. Say it. What? The Post is reporting about Huawei's relationship with North Korea. Well, we'll have to find out. Uh, our, our relationship with North Korea has been very good. We've uh, really established a good relationship with Kim Jong-un. I have personally. Uh, there's no rocket testing. There's no missile testing. We're getting our remains back. We got our hostages back. And we have a very, very good relationship, the two of us. And that's very important. There's been no nuclear testing. And what they're doing with 5G will be, uh, you know, we'll have to see. I, I'll have to, I'll find yes, out. Say it again. This is John Zabali from Airway News TV Pakistan. Lindsay Graham, when he met Imran Khan, he says, you both are kind of same personalities. You are the president who fulfilled all your promises. You made I do. Campaign. I do. And it's same like Imran Khan. He's also yeah. fulfilling all his promises. So how do you see this meeting like the same kind of person, straight to the point? Well, I think we're going to have a great meeting today. I know that it's an important meeting. I consider this a very important meeting because I think we haven't met the potential of either country. I think uh, the potential with Pakistan and, and likewise, the opposite way. I think uh, we have not even come close to meeting it. There is tremendous potential between our country and Pakistan. I think Pakistan is going to help us out uh, to extricate ourselves. We're like policemen. We're not fighting a war. If we wanted to fight a war in Afghanistan and win it, I could win that war in a week. I just don't want to kill 10 million people. Does that make sense to you? I don't want to kill 10 million people. I have plans on Afghanistan that if I wanted to win that war, Afghanistan would be wiped off the face of the earth. It would be gone. It would be over in literally in 10 days. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to go that route. So we're working with Pakistan and others to extricate ourselves. Nor do we want to be policemen, because basically we're policemen right now. And we're not supposed to be policemen. We've been there, we've been there for 19 years in Afghanistan. It's ridiculous. And I think Pakistan helps us with that. Uh, because we don't want to stay as policemen. But if we wanted to, we could win that war. I have a plan that would win that war in a very short period of time. You understand that better than anybody. Uh, we've been in there not fighting to win, just fighting to — they're building gas stations. They're rebuilding schools. The United States, we shouldn't be doing that. That's for them to do. But what we did and what our leadership got us into is ridiculous. But. Uh, we will. I think we'll have some very good answers on Afghanistan very quickly. Mr. President, Jared Bowles says the Mueller report lays out evidence of high crimes and misdemeanors. Yeah, go ahead. You go ahead. Go ahead. This is the Mueller report. Pakistan. Pakistani army has fought war against terror, and it has fought definitely and gave sacrifices in protecting Pakistan and Pakistan border as well. But Pakistan's sincerity was always doubted. Pollution Sport Fund was suspended by the U.S. Defense Department. So at this time, when Pakistan economy is facing great trouble, are you going to restore any package for Pakistan? So we are going to, that's right, we were paying $1.3 billion to Pakistan as aid, uh, working up for many years. The problem was Pakistan, this is before you, Pakistan was not doing anything for us. They were. Uh, really, I think, subversive. They were going against us. And uh, this is something we'll be talking I ended that about a year and a half ago, the $1.3 billion. And I, I tell you what, to be honest, I think we have a better relationship with Pakistan right now than we did when we were paying that money. But all of that can come back, depending on what we work out. We're working out things that uh, are very important. We have a very — this — I consider this very important. We're working out things that are very, very important. And I think at the end of this, at the end of a very short time, we're going to have a very great relationship with Pakistan. And we should. It's a great country. It's a great — they're great people. I have many friends from Pakistan. Living in New York, I have a lot of Pakistani friends, I will tell you that. And they're, they're great people, smart, 
Tough. They are tough. There's no question about that. They're like him. They're tough. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be watching. Probably. Maybe I'll see a little bit of it. I'm not going to be wa watching Mueller uh, because uh, you can't take all those bites out of the apple. We had uh, no collusion, no obstruction. We had no nothing. We had uh, a total no collusion finding. The Democrats were devastated by it. They went crazy. They've gone off the deep end. They're not doing anything. They're not doing health care. They're not doing uh, infrastructure. They're not lowering drug prices. I'm lowering drug prices. First time in 53 years that drug prices went down last year. 53 years. And I'm doing that without the help of Congress, which makes it much tougher to do. Because if they worked with us, I could get drug prices down in half. But the Democrats don't seem to care about drug prices. All they care about is a phony investigation where the report was written. It said no collusion. The report was written. And the Attorney General, based on the report, was easily able to find there was no obstruction. Uh, there's no nothing. They're wasting their time. Uh, and Robert Mueller, I know he's conflicted. He had a lot, there's a lot of conflicts that he's got, including the fact that his best friend is Comey. But he's got conflicts with me, too. He's got big conflicts with me. As you know, he wanted the job of the FBI director. He didn't get it. And we had a business uh, relationship where I said no. And uh, I would say that he wasn't happy. Then all of a sudden, he gets this position. But you know what? He still ruled, and I respect him for it. He still ruled. No collusion, no obstruction. And uh, this thing should have ended a long time ago. This has been going on for two and a half years. And we're never going to allow this to happen to another president again, because most of them wouldn't be able to take it. On top of everything else, we have the strongest economy. We were just discussing this with the Prime Minister. We have the strongest economy that the United States has ever had. We have the highest stock market yesterday, literally, the highest stock market we've ever had on Friday, Thursday. Uh, we've broken the record, I think, 109 times for our highest stock market. But on, I believe, Thursday of last week, we hit the all-time highest in the history of our country. Our country is doing phenomenally well. Unemployment is the lowest in 51 years, soon to be the lowest in history, if it keeps going this way in a short period of time. Black, Hispanic, Asian unemployment, the lowest in history. Women, the lowest in 72 years. Uh, nobody has ever done what we've done. Nobody's done in two and a half years what we've done. The biggest tax cuts in history, the biggest regulation cuts in history, uh, so many things for health care. We got rid of the individual mandate, which was the worst part of Obamacare. And what it going to end up, if we end up winning the House back, we keep the presidency, we should keep the Senate, we should keep the presidency, I would think, easy when you have the strongest economy in the history of our country, and somebody's going to run against that particular president, even though, in this case, it's me. In theory, I have a big advantage. I don't know. I'm going to have to ask you. But in theory, I have a big advantage. So a lot of great things are happening. But the Democrats, they don't want to talk about that. They want to stay off the economy subject. Uh, and what they're doing is just hearing after hearing after hearing. It's nonsense, OK? They tried an impeachment vote, and they got slaughtered last week. They got absolutely slaughtered. It was the most ridiculous. I didn't even know, know they were going to do it. And I'll tell you, just in finishing, I have a lot of respect for the Democrats, because most, most of them voted against impeachment Mr. last Mr. week. And I have a lot of respect for those Democrats that did that, because they're doing the right thing for the country. No collusion, no obstruction. OK. Yeah, we're talking about it. Uh, Secretary Mnuchin is talking about it. We're having very good talks with the Speaker of the House, with Nancy Pelosi. We're having very good talks with Chuck Schumer and, of course, with Mitch McConnell and Kevin. We are uh, Kevin McCarthy. We are, I think, doing very well on debt. Uh, if you look at debt limit, however you want to define that, but we're doing very well on that. And I think we're doing pretty well on a budget. Very important that we take care of our military. Our military was depleted. And in the last uh, two and a half years, we've undepleted it, OK, to put it mildly. We have made it uh, stronger than ever before. We need another big year. So we had 700 billion. We had then 716 billion. And this year, we're going to be asking for a number slightly larger than that. We're putting our military back into a shape that it's never been in before. New, the best missiles in the world, the best equipment in the world, the best military equipment of all. We're building submarines, the finest.
Nobody can even think about competing with what we're building. We're building, uh, as you know, new submarines. We have a new aircraft carrier coming online. It's the largest ship in the world. It's so large that maybe I could even land a plane on top of it, okay? But it's a big — it's a big one. President Gerald Ford. Uh, it's a phenomenal uh, — it's a phenomenal ship. So what we're doing — what we're doing is uh, — incredible things for our country. And you're just, just about — and I might, I might say this uh, about the military equipment. It's all made in the USA, everything, 100 percent. It's all made in the USA. And, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons our job numbers probably are so good, lowest unemployment. Yeah. Mr. President, 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 Mr. So he will be definitely extending your invitation. So uh, would you be visiting Pakistan? Uh, well, I can't say that yet, because so far he has not extended me an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> and after today's meeting, maybe he won't. But I have a feeling he might. Yes, I'd love to go to Pakistan. Yes, please. Mr. Salimi here from Pakistani News Channel. Is there any exact date or time frame of U.S. troops withdrawal is under consideration at your administration? Are you talking about from Afghanistan? Yes. Yeah, we have already withdrawn quite a few. And uh, we're doing it very slowly, very safely. And we're working with Pakistan and with, as you know, we're negotiating with the Taliban. And we are doing, I think, very well in that regard. Again, it's something that we could do. We could go one of two ways. We could do a number the likes of which they've never seen before and win it very quickly. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that because you're talking about millions of people, and I don't want to do that. And we're working with Pakistan on getting a solution. And I think I think it's being worked very well. Wouldn't you say so, Mr. Uh, well, I don't know. We're moving a lot of them out. And uh, we've done what we were supposed to do. We've been there for 19 years. And we've acted as policemen, not soldiers. And again, if we wanted to be soldiers, it would be over in 10 days. One week to 10 days, if we wanted to. But I have not chosen that. Why, why are we — why would we kill millions of people? It wouldn't be fair. In terms of humanity, it wouldn't be fair. So we're doing very well, and I think that Pakistan is going to be a big help. What role do you see for India in — Say it. — What role do you see for India in Afghanistan? And, Mr. Prime Minister, same question to you. What — does India have a role to bring peace in Afghanistan? You see, this is the, cl the, the closest we've been to uh, a peace deal in Afghanistan. Yeah. And there is no military solution in Afghanistan. There is no military solution because, as Mr. President says, if you go all out military, there will be millions and millions of people who would die. So there is only one solution. And I feel, and I think we will discuss this, it's the closest we have been to a peace deal. And uh, we hope that uh, in the coming days, we will be able to uh, urge the Taliban to speak to the Afghan government and come to a settlement, a political solution. And what the Prime Minister — excuse me — what the Prime Minister just said is a very big story, and that's 100 percent true. Uh, we're, we've made a lot of progress over the last couple of weeks, and uh, <laughs> Pakistan has helped us with that progress. Uh, but a lot of great things are happening. A lot of things are happening for the United States, and I think a lot of great things are going to be happening for Pakistan, too, under your leadership. I really feel that. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Okay. Mr. President, are you closer to negotiations or to armed conflict? I think Iran doesn't know where they are. I've been watching and reading a lot of reports, and right now they're a very mixed-up country. They don't know whether they're coming or going. Uh, they have tremendous problems economically. Their country's in turmoil. They're having demonstrations all over Iran. Their inflation rates at 75 percent. Uh, they have a lot of problems. So whatever it is, it is. Uh, I'm just going to sit back and wait. Let's see what happens. But I will say they are doing — they are doing very poorly as a country. And we'll see what happens. Uh, we did actually uh, — because they said no. And, uh, you know, it's a religious country or religious leaders, but they lie a lot. Uh, we did shoot down. Unfortunately, we had to shoot down a drone. Uh, the drone came down. You know how it was, how it came down with a new technology that's actually quite amazing. Uh, but uh, we took down one of their drones. Instead of saying, 
Yeah, that happened. They lie. They say it didn't happen. So uh, we have, uh, there's a lot of proof. It's called, uh, take a look at it on the ocean floor. Just go down there, take your scuba gear and go down there in the ocean. One of you would do that, I know. But uh, we took down a drone. Uh, I think very importantly, uh, I read a report today about uh, CIA. That's totally a false story. That's another lie. They put out propaganda. They put out lies. I don't think Pakistan would ever do a thing like that, right? You, Pakistan, Definitely not. Pakistan never lies. Definitely not. But Iran does, unfortunately. So uh, let's see what happens with Iran. We are ready for the absolute worst, and we're ready for sense, too. But we are very geared up. And uh, if they, they, are, they are really the number one state of terror in the world. Now, I have to say, they've pulled back because they, their money is running very low. The deal that President Obama made was a disaster because it was such a short term. It didn't cover ballistic missiles. And they couldn't see the important sites. Under this, you couldn't inspect the important sites. There were many things wrong. And, of course, they gave $150 billion plus $1.8 billion in green. Green, beautiful cash. That's called many plane loads of cash. I think Pakistan would like to have some of that cash. But they gave $1.8 billion in cash, which is unthinkable. And instead of being respectful and thankful, which, frankly, they should have been to the United States and to President Obama for making that ridiculous deal, instead of being respectful, uh, they put their finger up in the air and — this finger, the thumb. They put their finger up in the air, and they disrespected the United States. He shouldn't have done that. That was a big mistake. Uh, one of the best things I've done is terminate that ridiculous deal. If they want to make a deal, it's — it's — frankly, it's getting harder for me to want to make a deal with Iran, because they behave very badly. They're saying bad things. And I'll tell you, it could go either way, very easily. Very easily. And I'm okay either way it goes. Yeah, go ahead. Are you from Pakistan? Yeah, I'm from Pakistan. Good. I want a couple of Pakistani reports. Yeah. I like them. I like them much better than our reports. Question: uh, uh, 92 News, Kuram uh, Shahzad. Uh, question is: uh, What do you think Pakistan could not deliver in 18 years, and uh, you have so much hope now that it could deliver? What are those things that Pakistan? You mean what now? they didn't do to they end the war? 18 years. They well, I don't think now. Pakistan. Look, I don't think Pakistan. Um, respected the United States. I don't think Pakistan respected its presidents. And I think Pakistan could have done a lot. I think Pakistan can do a tremendous amount against uh, — with respect to Afghanistan. They didn't do it. And I don't blame them, because they were dealing with the wrong president. Who knows? But I think Pakistan could have done — they're helping us a lot now. I think they could have helped us a lot in the past. But it doesn't matter. We have a new leader. He's going to be a great leader of Pakistan. And uh, we have a new leader here, sort of new. I'm two and a half years now, getting to be three years. Can you believe it? You're going to find time flies. But no, I think Pakistan could have done a lot, but they chose not to. And that's because they did not respect U.S. leadership. That's all. Pakistan, 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 Pakistan. Well, I'll let you know that uh, very quickly. I'll let you know. I mean, I'm going to know soon. It's not going to be like a long-term thing. I, f I figure things out very quickly. So uh, the question was, that's probably the best question you've asked in a long time. <laughs> First time, she's always asking Mueller, Mueller, Mueller. She's been asking this Mueller thing for three years. It's your best question. So I, I have to focus on that, because that's such a great question. I think Pakistan is going to do a lot. I really do. I think Pakistan is going to make a big difference. I think Pakistan will save millions of lives in Afghanistan because I really believe they can — they have a power that other nations don't have with respect to Afghanistan. And I will say, as of this moment, they're working very hard and very nicely. Mr. President, 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 Mr. Have you been briefed on any of that? You have well, any I have. And, and, in China? You know, I, I know President Xi. We're working on trade deals right now. We'll see what happens. Meantime, they're paying us billions and billions of dollars of tariffs, which is fine with me. Uh, but uh, I know that they're working. I know that's a very important situation for President Xi. And, um, you know, you could say what you said, but you could also say that 
He has allowed that to go on for a long time, and, and you know, it's been, it's been relatively, I think it's been relatively nonviolent. Uh, Do you believe the protesters should be allowed to protest on the streets in Hong Kong, as they've been Well, they the are. Protests? I mean, they are. I don't think China has stopped them. China could stop them if they wanted. I think, I think that, again, I'm not involved in it very much, but I think President Xi of China has acted responsibly, very responsibly. They've been out there protesting for a long time. Uh, I've never seen protests like it where you have that many people. It looks like two million people. Those are big protests. But uh, I think that President the, I, I hope that President Xi will do the right thing. But it has been going on a long time. There's no question about it. Mr. President, even, even, even your critics even, even you want to take a question? Prime Minister, Prime Minister, get everybody from Hawaii News. Over the news. Mr. Prime Minister, uh, Mr. President made uh, good remarks about Pakistan and said that Pakistan can help a lot uh, to end the violence in Afghanistan. Uh, the dialogue process uh, and reconciliation process. Uh, so what really Pakistan can do to bring peace, because you're also accompanied by your deputy commander general, uh, Bajwa and other security team. So what solution Pakistan, what strategy paper you have to push forward the peace and reconciliation process in Afghanistan and assurances to the U.S. yesterday? Well, number one, this is the longest war that the United States has ever fought. It's almost 19 years. Number two, I am one of those who always believed that there was no military solution. Because anyone who knows the history of Afghanistan, you just have to look back at the history. Uh, there was always going to be a political settlement at the end. And I have to compliment uh, uh, President Trump because he has now forced people to end the war, to have a, have a settlement. And that's where I think uh, uh, Pakistan is playing a very important role because Pakistan has a 1,500 uh, mile border with the Af Afghanistan and all the areas where the trouble is, which is the eastern side of Afghanistan. So this is a critical time. I'm looking forward to my talks with uh, President Trump. We have our military uh, uh, leadership here because this is obviously a security situation. And what we want is understanding between the two countries. Uh, I can assure President Trump that whatever we will be saying will be the apps. We will be straight with them. There will no, never be any question of any doubt on Pakistan's intent because in, uh, Apart from Afghanistan, the country that wants peace in Afghanistan more than any other country is Pakistan, because we get directly affected by it. And Pakistan needs stability. We have had uh, 15 years of uh, fighting this war on terror, over 70,000 Pakistani casualties, over $150 billion lost to the economy. So we desperately want peace. And I'm happy that uh, President Trump has pushed this forward. So we hope, I'm looking forward to these uh, talks. Prime Minister, Prime Minister, can you hear us? Prime Minister, it's a peace Prime Minister. of the region. Yeah. And yeah. A, 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 apart from Afghanistan, there is a little security threat in South Asia. And that is a clear dispute unresolved by the United Nations. It's and even by the U.S., who voted in support of that resolution in the U.S. Now, are you going to make any kind of submission and intervention of President uh, Trump? And the same question to Mr. Fraser. Is he going to play I went, any role in that? Okay, he's gone. I will, I will, I've he's got a I will be asking President Trump. Uh, he's, uh, it's the most powerful country in the world, the United States. It can play the most important role in bringing peace in the subcontinent. You know, there are over a, hundred, well, over a billion and, uh, and a quarter people in the subcontinent. They are held hostage to the issue of Kashmir. And I feel that only... Uh, uh, the, 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 the most powerful state, uh, headed by President Trump, can, can bring the two countries together. I, from my point, I can tell you, we have tried our best. We've made all overtures to India to, uh, to uh, start dialogue, resolve our differences uh, through, through dialogue. But unfortunately, we haven't made headways as yet. But I'm hoping that President Trump would uh, push this process. So I was, with, uh, I was with Prime Minister Modi two weeks ago. And we talked about this subject. And he actually said, would you like to be a mediator or arbitrator? I said, where? He said, Kashmir. Because this has been going on for many, many years. 
I was surprised at how long. It's been going on a long time. 70 years. I think they'd like to see it resolved, and I think you'd like to see it resolved. And if I can help, I would love to be a mediator. It shouldn't be — I mean, it's impossible to believe two incredible countries that are very, very smart, with very smart leadership, can't solve a problem like that. But if you would want me to mediate or arbitrate, I would be willing to do that. Uh, President, I can tell you that right now, uh, it would — you will have the prayers of over a billion people if you can yeah. mediate and resolve this issue. It should be resolved. So — but he asked me the same thing, so I think there's something. So maybe we'll speak to him, or I'll speak to him, and we'll see if we can do something. Mr. President, even — Because I've heard so much about Kashmir. Yes. Such a beautiful name. It's supposed to be such a beautiful part of the world, but right now, there's just bombs all over the place. They say everywhere you go, you have bombs, and it's a — it's a terrible situation. It's been going on for many years. If I can do anything to help that, let me know. Let me give you one thing on Afghanistan as an example. So, a lot of you don't know this, but we dropped the largest non-nuclear bomb ever built in history. Uh, we dropped it in Afghanistan. We were getting ready to make many of those bombs. This left a hole that was — it took out a lot of the — a lot of the tunnels and everything else. But it left a hole in the Earth that looked like the moon. It looked like a crater from the moon. Still there. Uh, it was — nobody's ever seen anything like it. People heard it 15 miles away. They said, what was that? It shook the Earth. Non-nuclear, the largest ever made by far. And they were going to make many of them. And I said, no, we don't have to — I don't want to drop that. I don't want to do that. Uh, so many easy solutions. That's actually the easy solution. And they'd come in and they'd say, let's have peace, but you don't have to do that. I think we're going to be very successful without having to go that route. And uh, I have tremendous confidence in the Prime Minister. All right, one or two more. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Uh, this is the name of the uh, Are you going to raise the issue of how we should be in a treaty with Ian and Khan Khan? And Ian, the President, to you regarding the freedom of the press in Pakistan, there are a lot of curves on the freedom of press, on the media, on the journalists. Uh, can you comment on that? Uh, go ahead. Uh, Pakistan press, to call Pakistan press <laughs> as if there's their curves on it. Pakistan has one of the freest presses in the world. All you have to do is, since I've been the prime minister in the last 10 months, I mean, the criticism I have received from my own press, unprecedented. I, so to say that there are curves on Pakistan press is, is a joke. Uh, Mr. When you say unprecedented, Mr. Mr. It can't, Mr. wait a minute, wait, wait. You, there's no way you. you're treated worse than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I mean, Mr. I can't. Yes, you are, you are fighting, uh, Mr. Mr. Manager. You, you're going to have to speak because I, I didn't hear your words. Yeah. Um, question was, are you going to raise the issue of freedom or the release of doctors? Freedom of the press? No, oh, yes. The doctor who had, um, we will do that. We will talk. We're, we're talking about hostages. Uh, we're talking about hostages being held in various places. I've had very good uh, luck with hostages, uh, with North Korea, with many places. They've treated us with respect, and I appreciate it. it made a big difference. Uh, we have two or three hostages that we're talking about. That's one of the gentlemen that we, we have heard about. And we'll be — we will be discussing that with many other yeah. subjects. Yes, we will. And, 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 and President Trump uh, — uh, just a minute. President Trump, uh, we will be giving you good news about the two hostages in Iran. Thank you. Mr. Prime Minister, you are fighting 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 Mr. Prime Minister, you are Go ahead. Ask it again. On your tweets, why are you escalating your feud with the four congresswomen and racial tensions? Well, I think they're very bad for our country. I, I really think they must hate our country. I think the, the four congressmen we're talking about, uh, the congresswomen, uh, what they've said about Israel, what they've said about our country, uh, when they uh, talk about disgusting people, when they talk the way they talk, when the one mentioned that uh, brown people should speak for brown people and uh, Muslim people should speak for Muslim people, and you hear all this, it's not what our country is all about. No, I think they're very bad for our country. I think they're very bad for the Democrat Party. I think you see that. And uh, they're pulling the Democrats way left. Nobody knows how to handle them. I feel they're easy to handle. To me, they're easy to handle because they're just out there. They're very bad for our country, absolutely. Yes. 
No, I don't think, no, no, no racial tension. No, no, there's no racial tension. Look, I had my best numbers recently, and it's because of the economy and what I've done for the African American. When you look at the African Americans are doing better than they've ever done in our country. That we're creating numbers. Look at the poverty numbers. Look at so many different, look at the unemployment numbers, the best they've ever had. No, we have fantastic relationships with the African American community. I think you'll see that. Certainly, you're going to see that in 2020. Well, I believe. Mr. Even your critics, even your critics say that you're going to win the 2020 election, and you are obviously very confident about that. Same thing with Imran Khan. Sir, you are also having a big war against corruption in Pakistan. So, can you just? Give us a comment on that. Well, I, I think he's going to win, and I think what's going to happen, of course, he's got a little ways to wait. But I'll go over, I'll, I'm going to campaign for you. I'll, I'm going to help him win this game. Yes. Uh, many experts say that economic prosperity is the best antidote to extremism and militancy. I agree, and I think that's very true, and I, it's actually a very good question. The, the answer is yes. I see great trade with Pakistan, and I'm not, I'm not talking about a little bit more. I'm talking about we could go 10 and even 20 times what we're doing right now. You know, Pakistan's a big country. It's actually a very big country, and they have tremendous product. They make great product. They make tremendous. I bought from Pakistan over the years when I was in the private sector. They make incredible product. They're brilliant people. They're hardworking people. I think we're going to have a fantastic trade relationship. I don't mean we'll increase it by 20 percent. I mean, I think we can quadruple it. I think you could go, I mean, literally, it sounds great. You could go 10 times more. You could go 20 times more. Because what we do right now is not much, and we should do a lot. So I think that's going to be, and I also do agree that. That has so much to do with great peace. Having a great trading relationship has so much to do with peace and extremism, in this case. I think it can have a — so I, th I expect that we will, within a very short period of time, start having very significant trade with Pakistan. Sir, are there any so working level talks with North Korea scheduled at this point since you met with Kim Jong-un? No, we just have a very good relationship, and probably they would like to meet. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. There was a little correspondence recently, we're very positive correspondence with North Korea. Between, between uh, you or again, you? there's no nuclear testing, there's no missile testing, there's no nothing. Uh, I think we will, yeah, What's at a certain point. The when, the when, when they're ready, when they're ready, we'll be ready. Good question, Mr. President. Good question on the question, Go ahead. Well, there'll be things uh, discussed. Um, uh, so, you know, that would be for afterwards. Uh, we'll discuss things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll, be, uh, we'll be discussing it. Uh, Mr. President, Pakistan, one of the provincial Pakistan, uh, uh, Rochistan, where the India is sending non-spirit uh, actors to destroy the state of Pakistan, uh, and the people from there are going to Europe and uh, other places, and they're getting accused, they're getting asylum in India, which is actually an indication that India is helping those non-state actors to infiltrate in Pakistan, and they created that. And one of the guys Pakistan is, uh, is holding, uh, which was the, you know, the lead, leading the network. So do you think that the U.S. will be playing a role in uh, swapping India to, uh, you know? I, I think I can very well. I have a very good relationship with Prime Minister Modi, and I think uh, we're going to have a phenomenal relationship with the Prime Minister of Pakistan. I, I do think that it's a two-way street. You know, you say India is coming in and destabilizing Pakistan, but India is saying that Pakistan's coming in and destabilizing. So there's a lot of room right there where we could meet. I think we could meet. Uh, you had a question on Puerto Rico. Did he step down? Oh, uh, I, look, he's a terrible governor. I think you have an even worse mayor of San Juan. She's horrible. I think she's horrible. I watched her. My people did nothing but complain about her when we helped them with their hurricane problem. Uh, the mayor of, of San Juan, Puerto Rico, is a horror show. She's incompetent, grossly incompetent. Uh, at the same time, the governor is not good. So the United States Congress, you won't believe this. Please close your ears, because this would be, gave Puerto Rico $92 billion last year for hurricane relief. Now, they haven't gotten the money, all of it, but they've got a lot of it, but they're scheduled to get 
the Congress of the United States handed him $92 billion. And that $92 billion is in the hands of incompetent people and very corrupt people. But the governor has done a terrible job, and the mayor of uh, San Juan has — she's horrible. I think she's just terrible. She's so bad for her people. And I think the government of the United States, I have to be careful, I'm the best thing that ever happened to Puerto Rico, because we did a great job in Puerto Rico. They don't like to give me the credit for it, but we did a great job. I have many Puerto Rican friends. I have a real understanding of Puerto Rico. I've, I've had jobs in Puerto Rico. Uh, I had, I think, the most successful — I own the Miss Universe contest, the pageants. And we had them in Puerto Rico. Uh, twice. And I'll tell you, we had tremendous successes. In fact, they said literally 100 percent — this never happens — almost — I think it was close to 100, but 100 percent of the island itself was watching. They liked those pageants. Now, I've had a great relationship with Puerto Rico. I'm the best thing that ever happened to Puerto Rico. But Congress has given them $92 billion. Pakistan would like some of that, right? 92, not 1.3, because Pakistan was getting 1.3. Uh, Ninety-two billion dollars, and the money is squandered and wasted and stolen. And I'll tell you what, the senators are not happy about it, and Congress is not happy about it, because you really do. You have incompetent — totally, grossly incompetent leadership at the top of Puerto Rico. The people of Puerto Rico are great. And the people of Puerto Rico like me, and they should, because nobody's given them what I give them. But the leadership is corrupt and incompetent. Thank you very much, Thank everybody. You very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Let's get impressed. Right this way. Thank you guys very much. Oh, we're Stay impressed. Right this way, you guys. Sir. One. Thank you, sir. No, well, that was okay, but Thank the one you. before. Thank you. Impressed. Let's go. Keep I'm very impressed. Thank you, impressed. Right this way, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, impressed. Our videos ko dekhne ke baad like aur subscribe karna bilkul na bhulein.